Hi, Anthony Smith here, COO of EMF Safe. We are the American manufacturers of the UL listed EMF Safe Switch. Dan Everson, our CEO, is the inventor of the original EMF kill switch, the EMF sleep switch, and now in its present form, the EMF safe switch. This is a remote cutoff device for your home that allows you to switch off unwanted EMF, allowing you to create an EMF mitigated sleep sanctuary. We empower you to safely switch off and be in control of the EMF in your home. Welcome to the Experts Interview Series. Enjoy. It's my pleasure to be interviewing Patrick Vanderbilt. Patrick is the Senior Managing Partner of GeoVital International and is a global authority on the subject of EMF radiation assessments and mitigation. He has educated many people, including health practitioners, how to professionally assess for low-level domestic radiation with a holistic approach, and many of those people are active around the world. He teaches extensive classes online and practical workshops in North America, Europe, Australia, and soon Asia. The GeoVital Academy for Radiation Protection in Austria, Europe, has a history nearing 40 years, making it one of the pioneers of many EMF mitigation and healthier sleep solutions, as well as one of the original players in EMF assessment and mitigation training for new consultants. With its background as a naturopathic health clinic, GeoVital stands out in the industry, having its approach and solutions based in experience with patients and health clients. Patrick himself brings a wealth of experience with nearly 15 years behind him in the field. He speaks internationally, writes, has his own podcast channel, Healthy Stronghold, and assists a multitude of people from families, corporate high flyers, and even royalty with assessments and mitigation advice around the world. Patrick and Joe Vital have been involved with countless new building and home improvement projects and commercial developments. So Patrick, it's a pleasure to have you here with us. Tell us a little bit about GeoVital and, and how it got started. Sure, thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, having me here. I was happy to, uh, to educate. Um, so GeoVital, as you mentioned, is originally a naturopathic health clinic based in Austria. And so this, uh, this whole story actually started with a family crisis. Uh, the Hannan family was confronted with a terminal breast cancer diagnosis. Doctors had given up. And um, uh, basically, they were told to get their affairs in order. And um, the Hannan family are, uh, are sailors. And um, that comes with a particular attitude. What do I mean by that? Um, when you drive your car and something breaks, you can pull over, you call roadside assistance, and you just wait. Somebody turns up. When you're out on the Atlantic, something breaks. You can't call nobody. Nobody pulls up, right? You have to fix it with whatever you have on board. And so when they were um, faced with Rositas, uh, that's uh, the mother of the family, um, or terminal breast cancer, um, Werner sort of jumped into that mode as in, well, if they can't fix it, I will have to fix it. What have I got on board? Um, and so he, um, he had the idea to organize a symposium. He invited everybody who had an alternative view on how to fix cancer. Um, and he hired um, uh, a hall in Montfort Castle on the shores of Lake Constance, a beautiful lake in the middle of Europe, um, and put them all together in a room to share ideas. And so as far as we know, it was the first event of its kind ever. Um, and all these people were, were, were sharing ideas. And radiation, uh, amongst many other things, kept, uh, kept coming up. And that's what really got GeoVital started. Um, so we had a, um, a, um, a large building, which was a multi-modality clinic. So we had different health practitioners, different modalities, helping each other, sort of linking into each other, referring patients, um, you know, where appropriate to each other. Um, that worked really well. And then we did the home assessments as well. And um, yeah, in our heyday at that time, we had hundreds of consultants just in Europe or um, Germany, Austria and Switzerland alone. Um, and then anyway, so this sort of grew and expanded um, as often happens in business when you're pulled on a lot. Uh, Han and family got a little bit burned out. So they sold the business and they went sailing for about 10 years. They went to America. Werner did a lot of lectures in the US. Um, and then eventually when they came back, you know, as often happened with restaurants, 
you know, new owner, new menu, you know, the, the feeling had sort of changed, you know, it all, it all became about key performance indicators and, and, you know, how many assessments do you do and how many product do you turn over? And most of the consultants had sort of left. Um, and so the Hanna family sort of took over again. Um, and, you know, that sort of, you know, sounds corny, but this sort of family feeling sort of came more back um, that, you know, uh, that holistic approach, which I know you and I very much um, share that, you know, first you investigate um, and then you, um, you know, then you make a plan for how you're going to improve the environment. Um, now we identified that there's lots of things you can do to improve health. Um, um, and all of those have merit. We're not, you know, um, quality air, the water you drink, the food you eat, it's all important. Um, in our experience, though, there were three things that had the single biggest impact on the patients, the health clients that we were working with, and that was electronic pollution. <clears throat> so it's radiation from the wiring, cell phone towers, although they didn't even exist when we started. Um, <laughs> geopathic stress, which is excesses of natural radiation from the soil. Um, and thirdly, the mattresses that people sleep, sleep on. And so in our experience, if we fix those three things, um, we've got an enormous percentage of people um, you know, very happy uh, with their road to recovery, so to speak. It's, it's interesting that uh, this was uh, the story you just told was about 40 years ago. So this has been going on for quite some time. Uh, many of the people listening, uh, this is new to them. They've, they've only just heard that EMF, electromagnetic frequencies, are even something that they need to be concerned with. It's, it's kind of like I don't know, back in the day, DDD and asbestos and lead, you know, people say, well, it's been out there for years. It's, it's no big deal. If that was a problem, somebody would have dealt with it. Well, look what happened. It took years and years and years for it to reach public consciousness. And now here we are with EMF. But there are people that have been working on this for uh, 30, 40 years. And it's not just in America and Canada. Uh, Patrick, I know GeoVital is in most of the countries of Europe, about a dozen or so countries. You, you head up GeoVital outside of Europe, which is at least another dozen or so countries. So this is something which is, it's global. And I think people need to realize just, just how this is affecting people all over the world. Yeah, I mean, obviously we're all the, the same human being and we are all um electrical miracles um we're also chemical mir miracles very much but certainly also electrical um and so you know everybody's affected by this i mean as soon as you introduce electricity in a house you've got problems already because those electric fields start coming out and so way before the introduction of the cell phone tower right i mean i, I remember right i mean i had a beeper right that's what it started with you know the only person that yeah. ever beat me was my mother, right? But it was so cool to have a beeper, right? And then, you know, then you got more of these towers and, and it just keeps increasing. It seemed every two years they come out with a new standard, right? We had all these standards and then we had 2G and then 3G came and for an hour up to 5 they They're already working on 6G. Um, and the, whilst it is a problem, it's very well documented that this is a problem. I mean, I often mention the bioinitiative report, which people can access and download at bioinitiative.org. Um, this has a label on it, 2012. And some people say, well, that's a little bit old. Well, you haven't changed. The exposure has only got worse. So whatever is in there is still just as you know, important now as it was back then. Uh, but that's a 1,600-page summary of the radiate of the, the radiation research that out there out there on a number of of different subjects so that's a, a good source of information to go to and we're all affected by that um <clears throat> what what is a little bit different but i do see of course around the around the world is, is the building styles you know the homes are constructed a little bit differently and so that's how we, we do get a variation of what people are exposed to but inevitably there's things that they that they need to fix um yeah, so yeah, Europe, Middle East, uh, Asia, uh, it just depends on the building style, but everybody has electricity in the house and that's where it starts going wrong already. And I think a lot of people are very much aware of or becoming aware of uh, smart meters and concern for the health that, that those are having and uh, cell phone towers, of course, 
uh, so, you know, 3G, 4G, now 5G. In addition to the to radio frequency, electromagnetic fields includes electric fields and magnetic fields. And people are concerned about their EMF exposure outside the home. We maintain that 70 to 80 percent of most people's EMF exposure is actually from inside the home. And uh, could you speak to that, the electric and the magnetic fields, uh, specifically inside the home, which I would you concur is, is actually the majority of most people's EMF exposure? And more specifically, your bedroom, right? The, the body is, um, is, is geared, is, is designed to rest and regenerate during sleep. It really doesn't do it at any other time. Um, so when you're worried about radiation, yes, you can. And, you know, uh, I, I've often been caught saying that you, do, you don't have to be paranoid about radiation either, but you, you need to deal with it where it matters most. And that's at home, more specifically, the bedroom. So we deal with people in, in high radiation uh, exposure environments like airline captains, cabin crew, right? That's probably one of the worst um, 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 occupations. I, mean, I think there's some other ex, uh, uh, occupations that have a very high radiation exposure. I'm trying to remember them all. Welders, um, airline pilots, and seamstresses are the worst three occupations I heard somewhere, which makes sense because a, a, a sewing machine is an electrical engine and you have a, okay. basically a dimmer on it, right? Because you have that foot switch. So you're always manipulating and squeezing the power. And apparently that creates massive amount of magnetic fields. Anyway, little side bit of information that's not so important, but. Um, well, actually, so, if I may jump in, that's very important. My dad was an airline pilot. And, and he, he did, unfortunately, several years ago, he did die of cancer. Um, I, I was a, an air steward for five years working with British Airways. So uh, I got about a million miles under my belt and uh, as, a, as an air steward. So, so you mentioned that. And uh, my wife spends an awful lot of time sitting in front of a sewing machine. So you really hit home on that one with us. <laughs> oh, well, there, there you go. So, yeah, with, with planes, whilst, you know, you know I'm, a, I'm a commercial pilot as well. So um, the weather radar um, um, there, there's a the, the maintenance rules when you do maintenance of the weather radar uh, i think it's 37 meters or 100 foot 110 foot you have to stay away from the nose of the aircraft um, because they figured that out because when an aircraft technician walked past an airplane with the weather radar on the chocolate bar he had in his pocket melted um, and i heard something that 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 has something to do with how the microwave oven was invented um, but wow. anyway, that's a side story. So there's a weather radar up the front. Of course, the, the front of a, of a plane has lots of electronics in it. So that's why the, the front of the plane is probably the worst part of the plane. Um, you're, you know, if you have to fly, you're, you're, you're always best in the tail. Uh, also crash tests, even though flying is very safe, crash tests actually show the back of the plane. You have far less G-forces on an emergency landing and uh, you know better survival rates, let's say. But between the wings, you're between the engines. You've got strong magnetic fields there typically as well. It's gonna be a little bit hard to assess for the layperson because uh, planes run on a different voltage than, than homes do. But um, yeah, so anyway, I was uh, a bit sidetracked. So um, we deal with people in those sorts of environments and we don't go out and fix their plane. We go to their house. Right. right. So when, when the airline captain is not doing so, and I know airline captains that have that have they've left the industry. And it, I mean, the view is gorgeous out of the window. Right. I mean, what a job sitting on the front of the plane and just it's raining down there. You come up a little bit of sunshine for a few hours. Lovely. Um, right, but they're not doing per se so well at the front of the plane. And there are people leaving the industry because I know they can feel that their body is affected by it. So we don't go and fix their plane to help them. We go to their house and fix their bedroom. Because that's where your body rebuilds the defenses. And so it's right. that bedroom that's key. Sleep is key regenerative time. So yes, you can get worried about radiation everywhere. Yes, you're exposed everywhere. Yes, they increase it everywhere. Um, but if you're going to do anything about it, if you're going to put any money down to sort of help you with this issue and, and use your brain, Right. And so there's so much, can I say crap on here? There's so much rubbish out there 
that doesn't do anything, right? I mean, harmonize, neutralize, balance, right? None of my consultants have ever been able to verify that radiation is reduced by any of those devices, right? So use your brain, don't just waste 50 bucks here, 100 bucks there. We come into people's oh, homes. Oh, and- $5,000 for a pendant that you wear around your neck. Five thousand dollars and somebody puts five grand down they think they're bulletproof i mean they think they're going to live forever because of this thing that they're wearing and you know and they could stand in front of an airplane with a chocolate bar in their pocket and the chocolate bar would still melt that pendants but they still feel great (laughs) it's called the placebo effect does work but not, not indefinitely (laughs) <laughs> but you, you mentioned the EMF for people, again, they're, they're new to this and just trying to, trying to suss this out. Is it even real? Does it exist? There are multiple industries out there where the effect of EMF on the biology, on the biome, on, on the people who work in that industry, this is well known, well documented. And um, there are certain industries that are particularly invested in not allowing this information to get out, the telecommunications industry. Um, There was a Senate committee hearing. How many tests did you do before you put these towers into these environments to test if they were safe or not? Zero, a big fat zero. No safety procedures or protocols were followed whatsoever. So, this is an important thing, and it is extremely well known in many industries out there, the effects of EMF. So, yeah. There is so much research out, and it, you know, people say, oh, we need more research. That's, that's out of the window. Or there is so much research already. You just want to need to have the desire to look at it. Any doctor who would look at the research that's available, yes. that would have to come to the conclusion that we have a problem here. Um, and so, yeah, we've, I, I heard, you know, or I read this on a website somewhere that was in Europe. Um, there was some inquiry that was done and it was a court case. And that sort of sudden, some this, so this expert came on um, and they were talking about exposure standards, right? As in the government may, some countries don't even have it. They may set an exposure limit where they say, well, that's the maximum our population is allowed to be exposed to. And this expert, and it was, it was chilling. He said something along the lines of exposure standards are set knowing full well that they can never protect 100% of the population. Um, as in, we're not willing to do without it. So, you know, especially people that are electro hypersensitive, you know, who feel the effects of this radiation type almost immediately or immediately, which is said to be about 3% of the population. So certainly not everybody we just deal with, we deal with everybody, but, um, he said, well, it's, it's basically the, the fact that there's always a group of people that are affected by it. This is an economical loss. And I sort of, ooh, that just gets chills down the back of my, my, back of my spine. But you, you, you're talking, as, as with always, right? It's business, it's money. Um, and as the majority of people are blind to this, happy to stick their head in the sand of the government, you know, if, the, if it was wrong or if it was bad for us, the government would do something about it, just like it did with us, asbestos smoking on airplanes and that sort of stuff. I mean, how long did that take for them to take rules on it? Because they couldn't avoid it anymore because it was so obvious. Exactly. Um, yeah. So, you know, the, the exposure standards don't protect us. And so most people don't care. And most people keep using that phone. And most people keep complaining about the fact that their videos aren't streaming fast enough and the resolution is too high. This problem is not going to go away. Electricity is not going to go away. Radio frequency radiation is not going to go away. It's just going to get keep getting worse. And so you have to take charge of your health. It's your responsibility. It's not the doctor's responsibility, your, your health. You have to take charge. You have to educate yourself. And you just have to come to the realization that, all right, well, I have a roof on my house to keep the rain out and the snow out. And I have insulation in my house to keep the heat in. Right. Um, I do that to protect myself against the elements, let's say. Well, there's a new element. There's electronic pollution. You get that from outside and you also get it from your wiring that you have in your house. And it's just time for you to deal with it. You got to you know, take action, uh, put the hands out of the pockets. And the, the good news is it's, it's not actually that difficult to deal with it. Um, I mean, you know, we talk about shielding and that sort of stuff. And 
I can imagine that for the, the lay person, you have no idea what to actually imagine, what shielding is. And then it sounds complicated. It's how difficult and it sounds expensive. Um, and yeah, well, it costs a little bit of money. But if, if you look at what you might spend as a family on supplements in a year, you know, $40 here, $50 there, right? It just ticks away gently. Well, there's a good chance that for a year supply of supplements, you've already shielded your child's bedroom. Right. And so it, it's just time. You have to take action and, and you just have to deal with it. You know, it's no use. Well, yeah. sometimes complaining about it helps. Sometimes people are successful in getting a <laughs> phone tower removed. And when there's a phone tower on, on your kid's school, you know, I, I, I think you should stand up and not, not keep stop shouting until that thing's gone. Right. But as a whole, you're going to get keep that exposure. You have electrical wiring in your house, which you do want because you want your appliances to work. You're just going to have to deal with it. You've already mentioned this, the importance of, uh, you know, basically none of us know how much EMF and somebody may be experiencing some medical effects, they're getting symptoms and things and uh, may have made an association between those symptoms and the environment in the home. So the number one thing to do is to have an expert come out with all the right equipment and the, the knowledge and to measure so that you know exactly what you've got going on in your home and then you can plan a course of action. Of course, at EMF Safe, we make the uh, EMF Safe Switch, which is a device that turns off the power at night and we, uh, you recommend our product. So we'll, we'll talk to that shortly, but I think maybe one of the best things we can, we can talk about the, uh, the side effects, the ill effects of uh, EMF all day long, but maybe one of the best ways of highlighting this is, uh, Patrick, could you share some stories with us about what's happened to some people that have had you come out, they have mitigated their home, you have, uh, you know, created an EMF sleep, sleep sanctuary yeah. for them. Um, you know, share some stories, because I think that's probably the most powerful, okay, you can say this is a problem and it's causing problems. Well, well, what happens when you turn it off? People get well. Uh, share some of those things. Yeah, um, thanks for bringing it up. So maybe what's also interesting to sort of bring to people's attention is that in, in terms of you being affected, right? All this stuff, you're exposed to it all the time. And we, and I'd love to talk to that, talk about that in a moment. We have culturally, as in the geovital culture, we've come from working with doctors, right? That's how we started. And, and doctors, when, when you have, you know, a, a mouth ulcer or something, right? They don't measure around your head. They're going to take a mouth swap. They measure the body, send that off for tests. And so with us, this sort of same philosophy made perfect sense, right? If you're looking for radiation exposure, the body's affected by, you should be assessing the body, not the air. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll talk about meters in a minute. But um, what I think is interesting to, to impress upon people is that you only have one body, Right. And you, we're all getting older. And as we get older, we say, well, getting old sucks <laughs> right? because we, we get all these little ailments and this doesn't work as good as it used to and all that sort of stuff. But you have no frame of reference. You have no frame of reference of what good health actually feels like because you only have one body and this is where you are and your body feels a certain way. You wake up in the morning and that's just how you wake up. That is how you feel when you wake up in the morning. And I don't know if, it's, if you say luckily, I mean, we get people that have health issues, the doctors disappoint them or they can't help them. And so they start looking for alternatives and they find us. But what about all the other people there that are just saying, ah, it's just part of getting older, right? Maybe it's not part of getting older. You know, we're exposed to all right. this stuff. It's triggering our sympathetic nervous system, which is your fight and, fl fight and flight response. So your blood pressure goes up, uh, your digestion suffers. And there's all these mechanisms that kick in the gear. So we have no frame of reference. Most of us don't have any frame of reference of how life could be, how, how you could feel until you start taking True. some of the stresses away. I think one of the best ways that probably a lot of people can relate to is uh, you start taking some, some vitamins. And, you know, maybe you notice the difference, maybe you don't over the course of a week or two weeks. And you don't think they're doing anything. So after a month, you think, oh, I didn't notice any difference. You stop taking them within two or three days, you're dragging. And you realize that by stopping them, 
you found out how much they were actually doing that you didn't realize because the change was so gradual. And we do the same thing with, with EMF. Just turn off the power at night for a week and see how you feel. If you don't, then if you notice a difference and you feel better and you're sleeping better and you're dreaming more and the, the migraines are going away, call somebody out, have them come out and measure and, and get, let's get this done properly. But sorry, so go, go ahead with your, no, 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 no. I know you've got, you got some, some testimonies you want to share with people. Yeah. Now, interestingly enough, the opposite also works, right? I mean, let, let's get this straight. 95% of homes we go into need something improving. Right. I mean, everybody has electricity, so that's already where it goes wrong in most homes. And then radio frequency radiation is just getting worse. Um, so most people need things updating. But there's also terrible homes that are completely off the scale terrible. Right. And those people, when they go on holiday, they feel better. When they stay at grandma's house, they feel better. Right. If that happens in your life, that's like the biggest alarm bell that's right. already telling you that your house, there's something wrong there. And there is, you should listen to your feelings more often. Um, so anyway, um, when we do an assessment, we have a, a tendency, or not a tendency, we have a, a culture that we want to assess the body. Um, I know you also advocate it when it comes to electric fields. And just to, uh, to sort of educate a little bit in case people are sort of all new to this. So we have voltage, voltage in electrical wiring that produces an electric field. So it doesn't matter if you unplug everything, the electric fields are still gonna radiate. They come out about two meters, about six feet, right? And then depending on where you live, it's 50 or 60 Hertz, your electrical system, right? So that field goes in and out and in and out every second, 50, 60 times, and every minute of every hour of every time you put your head on your pillow. Right. And of course, you, you typically put your bed against the wall. Right. So you're right near these wiring, right near that field. And it just does not leave you alone. Now, your body, your cells have electrical receptors. Right. You can't expect the body to work optimally under those circumstances. Right. So when we do an assessment, we want to see what happens with the body. And so for electric fields and in the end, we've used different meters in the end, we, had, we were sort of making our own. Um, so we have this, this meter is called the EM field probe. This has this wobbly antenna, and this allows us to actually make body contact. And so we typically ask, and we always, when we do an assessment, we know it's a lot to take in. And we know that if we run around and we throw uh, difficult terms around, you might think, oh, that guy really knows what he's talking about. But you won't understand come the end of the assessment. Right. So we use simple words um, and we are in the habit of giving the meters to the people to use. It's like you do the assessment under our sort of guidance. And so, you know, the husband might be holding this meter. They're sitting at the feet end of the bed. They've got their wife in the bed. They ask them to take their sock off. We place that between the toes and then we can see how much electric field we're exposed to. Um, now, we could, between you, me and the entire audience, we could measure on your wrist or on your neck just as easily. But if we measure on your foot, you can see that this field comes out that distance, right? You can see it, you can hear it, and it's, it's very confronting. And then when we find this, after we've done all the measuring, then we can investigate. And then we need to figure out which electrical circuits are causing this problem, right? And then we need a cutoff switch installed that with the press of a button can cut the power to these circuits and remove that electricity uh, very quickly and conveniently for you. And that's why we love working with you. Um, so this is one way we assess the body. And then the other thing we do, which is probably even more unique, is that for radio frequency radiation, we also have a tool so we can assess what the body is absorbing. In our experience, that has shown to be a far better indicator than relying on what the air exposure is, because the body is a big antenna. And we know this if you're old enough Right, you remember having the, the old TV and the bunny ear antennas on the top, right? And and you know the picture would go lousy. And you'd send somebody over to adjust the bunny ears, right? And as long as they were holding on to it, you had a great picture, right? And you say, yeah, 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 right. leave it like that. And they'd walk away, right? And then we rubbish again. I was, oh, just keep holding on to it, right? Your your <laughs> body is a big antenna, right? We know right, this, right? So, Absolutely. Absolutely. So measuring yeah. the air to us doesn't make an awful lot of sense. When it's possible to assess the body, you should you should do that. And so we we do that, and we can see what the body is 
taking on. And that is a good measure to benchmark against like, is this good enough or should you shield if you need to shield? No, no big deal. You can do that yourself, but you do need the right products designed for the right reasons, avoiding ingredients that you might have intolerance issues with. That's where we go, tend to go a lot, lot deeper with this. Um, and so when then the shielding is in place, again, it's your body that will tell if the shielding uh, was, you know, if you have the right performance, let's say, because if that number is still too high, well, then you're still not finished. You got to keep going. Um, so that's the way we assess the body. So in terms of, in terms of stories, how, how does somebody feel when, when you take care of this? Well, it, it's not like a drug, right? It's not like you shield your room and like all of a sudden you're euphoric and it feels fantastic or something, but it, it's different for everybody. Some people have, um, a, a lucky learning experience. Let's say they change something in their life and they immediately feel the difference. And I have a, a brilliant example of this. Uh, there's a couple where I did an assessment. Um, this was a um, yeah, sort of middle-aged family. They had two children, about 15 years old or so. And we identified that there were just two electrical circuits that needed to be off at night to remove the electric fields. Um, so great. Now, often when we do the assessments, um, some people take the bull by the horns, which are really appreciate and say, all right, let's, let's get to work. Let's do this and this and this. Right. And if, you know, if you find five issues that should be fixed, you should fix all five, right. You, you shouldn't just do one because that sounds good. Right. Um, I mean, you don't have to do them all at once, right. You can make a plan, you can smear it out over a year or two if you have to. Um, but you should be at peace with the fact that you, you should be fixing the list. Right. Um, and so anyway, so these people, all right, great assessment, interesting. Um, um, you know, they needed a couple of days to, to yeah, wherever one, how long they wanted to have a bit of a think about what the approach was going to be. And so dad normally gets up really early before everybody else. Um, and he said, all right, I'm going to do an experiment. He says, every, because I tend to go to bed at, light, at night, the latest. So he said, what I'm going to do is um, when you guys are all in bed already, I'm ready to retire. I will go outside, circuit breaker panel is outside at that house. I will go outside and I will turn off those two circuits or maybe I won't, but I will go outside and you will hear the fly screen door opening and closing and you will hear the circuit breaker panel open and what, but you might, you know, I'll, I'll turn those two circuits on or off. I'll decide, right? Then I'll close the box again. I'll go inside. I'll go to bed. And when I get up in the morning, I'll go back out and I'll turn them back on. Or maybe I didn't turn them off at all. I just go outside to pretend that I might be turning them back on, right? So he's doing, sort of doing a bit of a blind study. And so the point was, okay, well, I'd like to hear from you guys, you know, from mum and from the children. Um, you know, how do you feel? Is it different, right? And so um, anyway, the, the kids were pretty negative um, before this experiment, right? And so there's no way that this is going to impact how I sleep. Right. Didn't believe it at all. Um, anyway, the kids, the boys, they had to admit that they slept better on the nights that the circuits were off. They figured out. Right. Because dad would later tell them. Mum had a very interesting story, which I relate to a lot of my students. She told me, says it was really weird. Very often, almost every single morning at about four o'clock in the morning, I wake up because I need to go to the bathroom. I go to the bathroom, I come back, and I can never get back to sleep. When we did this experiment, the odd thing was, I still had to get up and go to the toilet, but on the nights that the circuits were off, I could get back to sleep, right? So as subtle as it is, but as obvious as it is, this stuff has a big impact on you as a person when you're sleeping. So. Some people have that they have a lucky learning experience and they feel something immediate. Um, same thing with shielding against radio frequency radiation. Some people feel it immediately. Um, I don't think I've ever had anybody who's regretted shielding their bedroom, even if the levels were quite low and they still decided to shield. Everybody sort of said, I love how my bedroom feels now. But the most heard comments, and I know this is subtle, but people say, I feel like there's a weight lifted off my shoulders. Or I feel like I'm camping in my own house. 
you know the feeling you get when you you go out the city and you you go camping with the family and you just away from it all that feeling that's what they now get at home and it feels great um so yeah um yeah a little bit of, of of experience from the field what that feels like but it makes logical sense that your body can't work optimally under the circumstances of being exposed to the electric fields from the wiring uh, and radio frequency radiation from, from cell phone towers and that sort of stuff and wi-fi and, and all that sort of jazz um but it also makes logical sense that your body does the resting and regenerating at night. Um, and so we should create a sleeping environment, especially a sleeping environment where the body is as close to nature as it can be. Um, and that has to do with this man-made radiation and also what you sleep on you know, as in a mattress, but that's a whole different story. We can do that another right. time. Yeah, I know in uh, California uh, last year, the year before, they, they were turning off certain areas uh because there was short of power so they actually turn off a whole town for for a week and there was all kinds of reports coming back where people were uh sleeping better um we actually sold a emf safe switch to a family they had a, a, a five-year-old autistic child the child had never spoken uh, they got an emf safe switch because they heard that autism uh children that are autistic are affected greatly by emf within one week of them putting in the EMF sleep switch where the power was being turned off every night, it was still on during the day, but turning off the power every night, within one week, that five-year-old child started to speak. Yeah. Now, you hear things like that, and it's like, uh, you know, I've shared this story on other interviews. I mean, that's that's why we do what we do. <laughs> because well, that's, I know that's why you get passionate. That's why I get passionate about this yeah. stuff. You know, when you get the thank you letters and, oh, we're pregnant, we're pregnant now. We've kept the baby. It's just like, wow, this all is awesome. Stuff. Or all, all, you know, kids with behavioral stuff. issues, you take yeah. care of the electronic pollution. And sometimes the next morning they go, that's a different kid. Um, fa fascinating, fascinating stuff. Yeah. Well, appreciate you sharing that, that story and, uh, and for, for all of the information with your uh, years of experience, it just confirms what many of our other experts have said, neutralizers and things like that, that not a lot of science there, any science. Um, but, you know, if too much EMF is the problem, then obviously less EMF or no EMF is, is, is this part of the solution. You know, we maintain that, that turning it off at night and maintaining a EMF sleep sanctuary is one of the most important things that you can do uh, for, for healing. And there's many other things, which is why you should call somebody out like a, a, from GeoVital who's been trained. Unfortunately, though, uh, there aren't that many. Uh, you've got about a dozen or so, I believe, uh, trained people here in the United States. Several of them are our affiliates already. Patrick, just tell us a little bit, somebody who might be interested in looking into this, just tell us a little bit about the uh, GeoVital training. Yeah, cool. Thank you for, for allowing me to do that. We do, we're desperate for more people in, in more places. Uh, just before we do that, um, do you know why I appreciate your switches? Uh, please, please tell me. <laughs> because we, because we, we, well, we, we didn't invent, because we also manufacture a switch, as you know, which is an, an automatic switch, but it's for 220 volts and it would cost a fortune to redesign it for America. So, um, we, we have a switch that we use in Europe and, and in other countries. Um, we have always cut the active and the neutral. And there's been other, I mean, this, there's not so many manufacturers make this sort of stuff. Um, there's been other ones and they always only cut the active. And I was delighted to figure out that in your design, you also cut the active and the neutral. Because if your neutral stays connected, then you can still have noise and, and things like dirty electricity, which you know, um, you know is a factor. Um, you can still have that sitting on that line as well. So it's it's fantastic and it's a proper design to cut the active and the neutral. And of course, the remote control that you use uses a low frequency. It doesn't transmit when you're not actually pressing the button. You know, the antenna just listens if there's a signal, and the, the remote control like a uh, you know, garage door remote control um, just sends the signal for a moment and, uh, and, and and gets it to cut off. So that's why we appreciate your switches so much. And that it's a finished box, which the electrician could just go boom, install it, sort of minimal 
minimal work and of course they're certified and that sort of stuff um, yeah it is a it is a finished product uh it's made manufactured in america it's it is ul listed uh, it is a finished product ready for the electrician to to install which is extremely easy the np which is the neutral and power switch and some people say well i don't understand why disconnecting the neutral would make any difference well we know that it does make a difference because we've had people who are EHS, uh, electromagnetic hypersensitive, they've been flipping off the breakers. When you turn off the breaker, you are only disconnecting the power line, the neutral is still in place. Uh, they hear about the EMF safe switch, they order an EMF safe switch and they, they order the NP. As soon as the NP uh, safe switch is installed in their house, now, instead of flipping breakers, they push that button at night, turns off those circuits, the neutral and the power, we get feedback from those people that say, turning off the power really made a difference, but turning off the neutral and the power was even better. And they had even better results with the neutral and power being turned off at the same time. So some people are particularly sensitive to those specific frequencies and uh, there is a definite benefit. And we've had feedback from the field telling us that uh, the neutral and the power disconnect really does make a difference. So thank you for mentioning that and, and bringing that up. There's also one thing which uh, I'm announcing now when by the time this video comes out, you don't know this, Patrick, um, but by uh, after April the 1st, we will be making an announcement. So this video will take me that long to edit it and get it out there. We will be offering an EMS safe switch with an optional whole house dirty electricity filter built in. So the regular EMS safe switch will be available but as an, as an optional extra, you can actually get a, a 24-7. It's both on uh, both poles, the left and the right. So it's a whole house dirty electricity filter built into the EMS safe switch. And that will be available after uh, April the 1st, uh, 2022, because this video could be out there in years, years to come. So again, for those people that are particularly uh, sensitive to those specific frequencies, the dirty electricity filter, which is a tiny percentage of the overall EMF that you're exposed to. But nonetheless, for those people, it, it's something that will be available. So yeah, um, to, to go into the training thing, we're desperate for more people around the world, really. Uh, also in the United States, our consultants are, uh, uh, I mean, luckily they like traveling, so you know they can get on planes and help people in other states and it's not a, not a problem. Often sure. families sort of combine as in a consultant might fly somewhere and they do a number of assessments whilst they're there and then the, the travel costs don't weigh some heavily on, on, on everybody. Um, but GeoVital has been training people for, for decades now. Um, I run a, um, we call it a, a sort of business startup course um, where we don't just teach about how to assess and how to mitigate, but actually how to be a consultant, how to find families that need your assistance. Um, so I do a, a guided online course over about six weeks. Uh, instead of teaching a course once every year, once every two years with 40 people in it, um, I, I'm happy to run these courses five, six times a year with a maximum of six people in it. And uh, so it's always nice and personal. You learn online watching videos. We have weekly meetings to go over the most important key parts. And we, during the COVID, time we've come quite uh, able to sort of substitute um, you know actual assessments in homes uh, by doing that virtually um, so that works really well it's a standalone program people can get to work um, uh, with that training on its own or expanded with some additional modules and that's where what we call the emf3 that's an in-person workshop uh, where i i'm i love flying anyway but i'll go to vancouver i go to Salzburg in Austria, I'll go to um, uh, Malaysia and Asia, hopefully soon, Melbourne, I do courses here. And so we do practical workshops, again, six people at most, because we also ask members of the public, say, do you want a, a free home assessment, Vancouver, right? And people put their hands up, as long as they're happy for me and six students potentially to turn up and assess their house, um, they get a free home assessment, the students learn, there's actually a person there asking questions Right, that's real experience and it elevates your experience and your confidence uh, a lot when you can do that in one location or you can do it a couple of times. So anyway, um, it's a fun process to learn. It's a, a rewarding industry, um, certainly emotionally to be in, as in 
you really feel like you're sort of making a difference for, in the world, you know, one family, one house at a time, um, and, you know, sort of helping people to deal with this thing that really shouldn't be affecting them, but it is. Um, and the reason I'm so passionate about, you know, our, our company is because we've come from working with patients and health clients. If it didn't work for our patients or the health clients, then the approach needed to be altered or the product needed to be better. And that's the only benchmark we've ever had, uh, not market share, not profit margin. Does it help? I mean, you can't promise, you know, it works for everybody. I mean, you'll have a better environment, that's for sure. But um, we need to maximize the opportunity to achieve the desired result. And you don't tend to be able to do that with something that was made with very little care and, and uh, per se very cheap, let's say. Um, you know, you need the right stuff, best quality, right ingredients. And, and that's why I love working in this, in this company. So if, yeah, if, if you have an interest in this area, uh, I'd love to hear from you. We'll do, uh, put some links with this uh, video to more information, uh, including the, right. the tracking as well. And uh, we'd be delighted to see you. Well, thank you, Patrick. I very, very much appreciate your time. I'm in, um, in Oregon and, and you're in Melbourne, Australia. So this is a, a global thing. Uh, you are a global company, and uh, we appreciate you uh, participating in the uh, experts interview series as as one of the experts out there helping people. And you've been doing it for many years. So thank you for bringing your expertise to the table. We appreciate it. People can uh, look up GeoVital with the uh, with the links below. So Patrick, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for having me.